What's up guys, it's George, and uh, there's a light rain going on right now out in the middle of Florida, and, uh, and I'm out here in, uh, uh, underneath this canopy type tree, just, uh, just kind of observing it all, and, uh, and I was thinking about how peaceful I feel right now, this moment, being out here in nature, just kind of listening to the birds sing, and uh, uh, grounding, got my bare feet on the ground, and just, just soaking it all in, and I was uh, 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 thinking about mental disorders and I wanted to talk about that because we live in a day and age where um, uh, where right now in our society mental disorders are at an all-time high in fact uh, in, the, in the United States it's the uh, uh, most depressed country in the world uh, and the interesting thing is we supposedly have everything um, and uh, but what's really interesting is that if you take a look at mental illnesses of those who live in the jungle indigenous type people um, compared to our mental illnesses, you can learn a lot. And so, uh, I've had the good fortune of, of uh, um, being able to meet shamans and, and make friends with indigenous type people and, and, uh, and learn a lot from them. And, um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and people, indigenous people, people that live out in the jungle, they do actually have mental illnesses. But uh, they're, they're different from the way that we experience mental illnesses in our country. For example, um, uh, those who live amongst the forest and in the, in the jungle um, and are truly uh, you know, immersed in, in living in the jungle in a day-to-day -day life, their type of mental illnesses and what they observe as a, as a mental illness is when, is when they feel that disconnect from nature. When all of a sudden uh, someone that's uh, um, uh, uh, you know, hunter or explorer, when they're no longer, uh, when they're having trouble uh, um, tracking birds or uh, um, uh, understanding where where animals are and, and being able to recognize patterns in nature and, um, and being able to track and navigate throughout the jungle, um, uh, that is what they perceive as a mental illness. Basically, when they start noticing a, a disconnection from nature. Um, uh, that's what they perceive as a as a mental illness. Where in our society, what we perceive as a mental illness is uh, um, uh, you know anxiety, uh, depression, stress, anger, paranoia, etc. Um, um, but a lot of it really comes down to a nature deficit disorder, in being disconnected from nature just being so far removed, so far disconnected from nature that the mental illnesses start to exasperate and they start to uh, um, form into a, a totally uh, um, different, more extreme type of mental illness such as uh, you know, paranoia, anxiety attacks, uh, uh, and things like that. And it's interesting because if you, um, uh, as you start to align yourself back with nature, that's when you're inevitably going to start to experience more peace in your life. And that's why there are a lot of practices throughout the world, uh, um, such as, for example, forest bathing, which is a practice in, uh, um, uh, uh, in the East where um, certain uh, doctors, if you will, what they do is they prescribe their clients who have high blood pressure to just simply to go out into the forest for like an hour a day. And sure enough, with, uh, within about a week or so, uh, it's been documented that their blood pressure comes down, their anxiety starts to go away, and uh, um, uh, and the mental illnesses, just in the different illnesses that they have, tend to alleviate themselves. And there are a lot of different, similar type of practices and exercises throughout the world. The forest bathing is just one of them. Um, I've also heard of practitioners who uh, um, who prescribe their patients to go to the beach, you know, out in the sand, leave their phone at home and go out to the ocean, take off your shoes and just sit by the ocean for 30 minutes a day. Or the simple act of uh, uh, earthing, grounding, where you take off your bare, your, your, your shoes and your socks and you just for a few minutes a day, you just, you, you connect your, um, your naked skin to, to the earth because the earth actually has a magnetic frequency. Um, which is a uh, 7.84 if I'm not mistaken. I know it's right in the sevens, but I'm pretty sure it's 7.84 um, In humans we um, uh, uh, Our natural frequency is that as well coincidentally we have that same magnetic frequency well, but what happens 
um, is that as time goes on, you know, we wear sh rubber shoes and, uh, um, you know, and our naked skin is not being able to connect and ground in, uh, to the earth and, and get in balance again with, with nature. You know, we wear shoes, we sleep on beds that are several feet off the ground. Uh, um, you know, we're walking on, uh, on, 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 on pavement with shoes and we're in office buildings. And what can happen is days, weeks, months, potentially even years can go by if you live in the city where uh, your naked skin hasn't even connected to the earth. And, uh, um, and what they found is just through the simple activity of earthing or grounding, uh, um, that uh, it can alleviate a lot of health ailments because again humans are uh, are electrical beings and, uh, um, and and the further disconnected we get from nature the more various different problems tend to arise um, and so um, um, so really the thing is that what I'm trying to uh, bring into perspective here is um, um, is to realize that the core behind a lot of your problems mental illnesses and even health ailments as well come from our, uh, our our massive disconnect from nature and that a lot the answer to a lot of your problems is a lot more simpler than you than you think is just to align yourself back in more with nature I'm not saying that you got to go you know live out in the in the jungle completely uh, as an indigenous person that's not what I'm saying but to uh, um, to try to way to find a way to um, uh, to weave nature back into your every everyday life. That's one of the reasons why I love gardening, because it's a way for me to be able to connect with the plants, to disconnect from the technology and the um, the fast-paced world, and just to slow down and to uh, connect back with plants and nature. Um, uh, it's why I like to uh, be barefoot all the time. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu people always uh, ragging me because I always got you know the bottom of my feet are dirty because because uh, um, uh, I'm all I, I try to be barefoot as much as I can that way I can connect to nature I'm, out, I'm, I'm, I'm barefoot right now I like to work out barefoot um, uh, uh, and uh, um, and just to take different practices in your life to to connect back with nature and so I feel that the culprit behind a lot of our problems different mental disorders and uh, even health ailments as well is that uh, uh, of a nature deficit disorder and I feel that this goes into all different areas of life, even so far as relationships. For example, um, uh, a lot of times in relationships, uh, what causes friction in the relationship and gets the relationship to, to fall apart is the needing to control the other person. You know, all of a sudden you're not happy because this person that you're, you're in a relationship with is uh, lives their life like this, and maybe they have these bad habits that you don't like or whatever, and they, um, and a lot of it comes down to control, our need to control the other person. Uh, but again, that's a disconnect from nature because as you immerse yourself back in nature Then what happens is you start to uh, That need to control the other person starts to dissipate and go away all of a sudden you start to realize that everything is connected <laughs> That we are all one But the more you disconnect from nature the more you uh, um, The more you associate with 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 just yourself the more you disconnect from nature and, uh, and you become focused on just yourself, i.e. the ego. And that's what happens. You become, we can become, uh, uh, in this technological age, we become obsessed with our reflections. We become obsessed with, you know, uh, you know the selfie, seeing ourselves in the mirror, uh, mirror muscles. You know, we got to have a good body that looks good in the, uh, uh, in the mirror and this and that instead of uh, uh, true health. Um, um, and so uh, um, even so far as uh, um, relationships, that's a disconnect from nature because again, as you immerse yourself back in nature and you start in that nature deficit disorder starts to go away, you start, to, like I said, you start to see how we're all connected, the birds, the bees, the plants, uh, everything. We're all connected, right? We're all, we're all connected. And it can be hard to see sometimes, like I was saying, in this fast paced, technological age and I'm not saying that you know all the technology is bad and, and uh, um, but uh, I think that you know technology is amazing and I think humans are amazing creatures and and uh, um, we've been able to accomplish some amazing things and uh, due to technology uh, it's allowed me to be able to learn more information and faster uh, um, and grow to a level I never thought that I would be in a lot in a large part is due to thanks to uh, technology and being able to utilize the internet YouTube uh, um, uh, uh, you know get books from the internet um, but uh, again we want to I think the ideas and the, um, 
and the focus should be to try to find a balance. Um, a balance is key, you know, where we can have the best of both worlds and being able to utilize uh, technology and the advancements of civilizations, but at the same time, not to forget that uh, um, we still are all connected and to uh, realize that nature is, uh, uh, is a part of us and that we need nature and that, uh, uh, and that nature uh, will continue to keep us grounded and keep us healthy. Um, and as you become, you know, even looking on a macro perspective as well, as you start to, um, even a lot of our uh, worldly problems comes from, come from a dis that nature deficit order and that disconnection from nature. Because as you become more connected with nature and you uh, bring yourself back to that connection, that grounded connection, earth, nature, you start to become more appreciative and not uh, and realizing that you know hey maybe it's not a good idea that I just throw this plastic wrapper on the ground and to just cut down every tree in the world and just decimate everything in in my way just so that uh, you know I can accumulate more and we can just have bigger you know as you bring yourself back to nature you start to uh, appreciate the beauty of it all and realize the importance of the nature and I think that it, it helps us by bringing us back to nature it helps us to become more conscious of our everyday decisions in, uh, um, in living our life in a manner that is more sustainable and respectful uh, to nature and that uh, um, you know as we as society as a whole this nature deficit disorder increases then that's where as a whole um, our, our you know our, our, our world tends to become sick you know as you know obviously if any of you guys have been paying attention to what's going on in the world it's pretty obvious that there are um, uh, uh, some evident sicknesses within our, within our world due to our nature deficit disorder and our, and our disconnect from nature. But, um, you know, we live in a time where people are waking up faster than ever and, uh, um, uh, uh, and are learning and uh, um, there definitely is a rise in consciousness, consciousness. So I feel optimistic for us humans. I think that we will persevere and, um, and I think that uh, in the end, uh, we're gonna bring ourselves back to nature as a whole, and that we, you know, and that uh, I feel I like I choose to see um, that, uh, see the best in humans, and see that together, because we are all connected. That we will slowly but surely uh, shift the needle so that we bring back to being connected with nature and uh, um, and, and and continue to thrive together as a species. But um, um, but yeah, guys. So just take a few minutes every day to get out in nature immerse yourself back in nature take your shoes off uh, leave the the phone inside just try to do some some bird watching i love bird watching bird watching see if you can track see if you can uh, try to connect your thoughts to animals see what they're thinking perceive what they're feeling um, even the plants as well just for fun you know uh, have fun uh, don't take life too seriously it's all meant to have fun uh, that's one of my mottos is I like to have fun with everything I do. You know, bring that childlike creativity back in you. Play with nature, you know, uh, pretend like the animals are, are talking to you and, it, and, it's, and it's fun. I think it helps bring that, that childlike creativity back, back, uh, uh, back out of us. Because again, I think that that's again another symptom of that nature deficit disorder is uh, um, as we get too disconnected from nature and we become too much of a grown up. We lose that that uh, um, that childlike creativity and being able to imagine and, and coming back to nature can help bring that out of us again, get us out of that uh, um, that left brain analytical thinking um, and back more into that uh, creative side of our brain, um, which you know both sides are important, but together when you use your whole brain, the whole brain power training, then uh, that's when the magic really starts to happen. So guys, so get out in nature. Hope you all having a great day. Let's make it a great day, a great week, a great month, a great year. Let's make it a great life. See ya.